All right, everybody, thanks for waiting. The attendance and the gate this year, we beat last year. It was 12,423 and a $3.286 million gate. The fight of the night is no secret, Miller versus Lausanne. <clears throat> uh, submission of the night, John Moraga. And knockout of the night is Duffy. All those guys won $65,000. Yep, the gate was $3.286 million. Thank you. <laughs> Who has the first question? Uh, uh, Junior Dos Santos was transported directly to the hospital, and uh, Cain Velasquez will be here in minutes. My man, right here with his hand up. Who's got the mic? <clears throat> oh, you go, oh I, pardon me, I didn't know you were already, it, it was already set up. Go ahead, you go first, and then we'll get you, John. Okay, Rodrigo del Campo, La Ciudad Deportiva. Uh, is this the show that the UFC has been waiting to go into Mexico with Kane and, and Eric doing this well? I think we're getting there, you know what I mean? I, th I think we're getting there. We we've been ready to go into Mexico for a long time. Uh, obviously, it, it doesn't hurt with the two guys that won tonight and how they looked. So. Uh, y para Eric, ¿cómo te sientes? Uh, how do you feel after this fight? Are you ready to take on higher competition in the bantamweight division? I feel very good. Uh, I, <laughs> I feel awesome, and I'm ready to I'm ready to go and rest one week and come back to training again for another fight. And do you have an opponent in mind, or what you will? Where whatever US, UFC say, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for Dana, please. Obviously, the uh, the main event, you know, pretty one-sided score, but still a pretty epic fight. Can you talk about, you know, kind of your impressions of that fight and, and, and you know, where you think this stands all time in the heavyweight division? Yeah, I mean, if I had to bet, I would have bet everything that I have that that fight wouldn't go five rounds, and I'd be broke right now. Um, I'd never expected that to happen. Cain Velasquez looked awesome. He came out in the beginning and was trading with Junior Dos Santos, um, hurt him, and then pretty much dominated the fight, you know. We saw what a what a tough, well-rounded fighter that Kane is, and I honestly think from the second round on, he could have stopped that fight whenever he wanted to. He was, he was fighting and playing it safe, but still doing a ton of damage, and I, I can't confirm this, maybe one of my people can, but I heard that Junior broke his jaw in the second round, and what we learned tonight is Junior Dos Santos is one of the toughest dudes I've ever seen. I mean, he took big shots tonight, he stayed in the fight, and uh, you know, wow. And I know, obviously, you never like to matchmake after a fight, but, you know, you've, you've said that Alistair Overeem, should he win, is probably next in line. I heard you told the Brazilian media this week that Verdum, if he wins, could be after that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think it's going to be a while. You know, I think Junior Dos Santos is going to have to take some time now and relax and heal up, and uh, Kane will probably fight again before, before he sees Junior if we do that rematch. I was going to say, is there a temptation to do the rubber match now? I mean, obviously, you've got, you've got the history. Well, this was I, I also think, as tough as Junior Dos Santos is, and was in, 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 in this fight, it was a very one-sided fight. So maybe Junior fights, you know, another fight. And, you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. If I could go to Jim, please. Jim, uh, obviously coming into this fight, you said that you haven't been satisfied with your performances. You know, you wanted to dominate. Uh, incredible fight between the two of you, of course. But, you know, are you satisfied with the way things turned out tonight? Um, not as much as I would be if I was able to finish this tough guy. <laughs> you know, uh, <clears throat> I knew that I was going to have to throw everything I had at him. Um, and that's what I pretty much did. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't, uh, couldn't put them away. And, you know, I, I, I don't get super excited about winning decisions. You know, I, I want to, I want to, you know, sub guys out, knock them out. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was a fun fight to be in. You know, I've never had a conversation with somebody in the, in the middle of a fight, you know, when they, when they had that w weird little break because of the gauze in his, in his glove. You know, I, I have the utmost respect for this kid. He's, uh, He's really an awesome guy. What was the chat there then? Is that when you, you guys had a little conversation right there? Yeah, it, I, was, I was like, ah, you know, great fight, buddy. You know, and I was like, <laughs> um, we're both like, oh, this is kind of weird. You know, what's going on here? And what I was, was like, I? Yeah, I was like, I, I think it might be because of the gauze, you know? And yeah, it was just a very simple conversation, but it doesn't happen often. And last question for you, Jim, as well. You said you wanted to stay busy in 2013 mm -hmm. and really get back. But after a fight like this, I'd imagine, you know, you need some time off. Does that change, or you want to still get back there right away? Um, yeah, I, I want to get right back into it. You know, uh, I'm a little lumped up. Um, you know, it was, it was a physically tough fight. Uh, but I had eight months off, 
between you know this fight and my last fight, and I don't like waiting that long. You know, I I, I fight because I like to fight, and I, and I really like to go in there and uh, and and do the things that I that I train to do. So um, if I could fight every three four months, that'd be wonderful. Dana, uh, just to ask you about the heavyweight division, uh, Kane, you know, we talked before and you were talking about how dominant he has been and how well-rounded he is. When you look at your division, do you see anybody out there that you would say, hey, could, you know, give him a run for the money at this point? I mean, it seems like he, he's kind of lapping the field almost like Anderson has in a way. Yeah, you, you never know in the heavyweight division. Junior was before that, you know what I mean? And tonight Kane came in and look, put on an incredible performance. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, it's an interesting matchup with him and him and Dos Santos. I'm not Dos Santos. Uh, Overeem, you know, Overeem's a big, strong guy. He kicks hard. He punches hard. Um, I don't know. I, I think I think if he gets by if he gets by Overeem, the, the the biggest fight out there again for him is the rematch with Dos Santos. Right. If Junior did not have the broken jaw, would that be a consideration given it's 1-1? You know, I know you said he had the broken jaw, so you're going to look at a different direction. If he didn't, you know, can you think about going in May and saying, you know, potentially doing that at, at that time frame? I, I don't know. You know, you can't even think about that stuff right now. It depends on, on how, I mean, uh, I don't know who here really saw Junior Dos Santos after that fight. He looked terrible. I mean, he looked terrible. And then give it two hours, you start to look worse, you know, and I'm sure he's... He's going to be very sore for a while, and especially if he has a broken jaw. You know how that goes. They're going to have to wire his jaw shut, and he's, it's going to be a while before he starts training again and stuff. And when you compare Kane's performance tonight to what he did against Brock, I mean, you know, obviously he fought a, a better fighter tonight, I think, than he did against Brock. But, I mean, did you see a similarity there? Did you see any growth uh, from, from that fight to this fight? No doubt about it. Um, and, and again, leading up to this fight, I kept saying, and I said it with Rogan when we opened the show, everybody was questioning his chin. I, I think Cain Velasquez has a great chin, and, and, and he proved that in the Czech Congo fight. You know, he took some big shots from Czech, and that was back when Czech was, was hurting people. Um, and I, as far somebody had asked him in the press conference before what his favorite fight was, that was my favorite Cain Velasquez fight until tonight. Um, I, it was the first time he was ever taken into deep water and, and, and had gotten rocked or anything, and, and he, he fought like a pro that night. And uh, again, same thing for Junior Dos Santos tonight. Junior Dos Santos, in his UFC career, had spent 13 seconds on the ground. That was it. And then tonight, you know, he, he had a broken jaw. He got beat up. Things happened to him that have never happened to him before, and, and the guy's just an absolute warrior and a stud. A uh, question for Jim, please. Jim, I think you talked about this a little bit in, in the octagon, but um, just right in front of you. So. Uh, how, how close were those submission attempts, especially the one at, at the very end? Um, the, the heel hook was, uh, was pretty close. I was, I was able to control his wrist um, and really push my heel down to try to, to you know, take that away from him, take that lever away. Um, I knew he was setting it up. He, he started to set it up on the opposite side of the cage. Uh, I was so exhausted, and it was a beautiful setup, and it was a uh, it was a beautiful move. I, I I admired it while it was happening, um, you know. But uh, he was gonna have to break it, uh, you know. I, I knew there was under a minute left, and uh, yeah, I was I was I was not gonna give in to that. Uh, and then for both of you guys, I think you kind of addressed... wait. He didn't answer the choke. I want to know the choke. Did he have that choke? Uh, yeah, the choke wasn't that close. No. Um, yeah, I was I was taking a break. Sorry, I had to know that. <laughs> And then I just wanted to ask both of these guys, you kind of addressed it um, when you said you had the conversation, but uh, you guys got some pretty unbelievable ovations there, especially going into the second round. And I know as fighters, you try to have laser-like focus and, and not really pay attention to what's going on, but, but did you notice that? And, and what are you thinking when, uh, when you hear a roar like that? Uh, I, I noticed it. I, I, I try to feed off the energy, you know. It, it gets me excited. and um, I was exhausted after that round, so I was trying to use some of that energy to, you know, Bring me back. Yeah, uh, I had quite a bit of blood in my eye, so I was kind of focusing on that. Uh, so I, I didn't notice it, but you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear that everyone was enjoying the fight. Dana, MiddleEasy.com, right here. There was some controversy surrounding the Leonard Garcia fight. I was just curious as to what you scored the fight. I was, a, I was a t t when, when I, were, I was in my back room, we were watching the fight, and I, I was just one of those fights where I said I wouldn't want to be a judge during this fight. Um, you know, I, I don't know how controversial it was. It was a war. It was a close fight, you know. Um, 
yeah, I, I could have had it going. Either. You know me. If, if I thought it was like, this is ridiculous, I'd say it. it. It was a damn close fight. Tough fight to score. Question for Joe here on, on your left, Joe. Uh, can you describe the fight and, and you know, how, how do you feel in your loss? Obviously, with fight of the night bonus takes a sting out of it, but you had a great fight and you probably earned more fans in this loss than, than perhaps with a win. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I really don't care about how the fight goes so much as long as, you know, I gave it my all. You know, I, I go out there and I, I do the best I can in training, you know, and if I did a great job in training, then I really don't care about how the fight ends. You know, if I go out and I win, that's great. If I go out and lose, you know, th that, that sucks. But at the same time, if, you know, if I did everything I can to prepare, then I'm, I'm not too worried. Uh, you know, I really like Jim, uh, you know, before the fight, after the fight, during the fight. Uh, you know, so if I get to lose to someone, you know, I'm glad it's a, it's a good guy like Jim. How, it, how important was your cut man tonight? Uh, you know, it was a big deal. You know, I was, so it was the first time I'd actually been cut and had it draining in my eyes so bad. You know, like I could just feel like warmness just spewing all over my face. Uh, so it really, uh, it was pretty big cut and I could see, but it was, it was definitely distracting. You know, the entire time I'm just thinking about it and, uh, you know, and the, the elbows kept coming. So it wasn't the first cut. It was quite a few. Yeah, and, and you, the media wasn't over on our side. At one point, he had like that, that, that arm choke on him, and it was literally squirting yeah. out of his head. Ari Emanuel, the agent, the, the real Ari from Entourage, <laughs> you got him good. Good. <laughs> you got him good. It should accomplish. And, and one question for Jim. It, it looked like at the end, you looked up and you took your mouthpiece out and you said, holy shit. It, what, what was going through your mind there? Uh, just that was a, a crazy fight. Um, you know, I was I was exhausted, uh, and you know, I I try to leave it all inside the cage, you know, and and uh, just give forth that that you know complete effort. Um, and I think I did that tonight. You know, I was, I was pretty exhausted and, and banged up, and uh, yeah, it was just even though I was it, I was in pain. I think he lifted me off my feet with that knee to the to the sternum uh, in the third round. You know, that definitely hurt, but. Uh, yeah, it was still, it was, it was a fun fight. It was a fun fight to be in. It and, makes me a sicko. And the question that you asked earlier, you reminded me, uh, Sean Shelby, one of our matchmakers, came to me, you know, during the fight sometime and said, uh, I guess Leonard Garcia was in a situation to be cut if he had lost tonight. And he came to me and said, Dean, I, I don't, I don't want to cut this guy. And I said, there's no way in hell we're cutting Leonard Garcia, so. Just a couple more here for Dana in the back. To your left. Yep. Ariel Hawani. Yes. Um, interesting night for the middleweight division because two top contenders, Belcher, Boach, lost. Um, the next UFC event is the FX show in Brazil. Can you say now 100% that if Bisping wins that fight, he will finally get a title shot? Yeah. It's funny, too, because yesterday um, at the weigh-ins, Belcher came up to me and said, I'm going to win this fight tomorrow night. And when Vitor Belcohort gets hurt, because you know he will, I'm going to step in and I want that fight with Bisbing. That's what he told me yesterday. So, yeah. You, if Bisbing wins, he'll get the shot. Okay. And um, obviously a big night for Kane, a big night for Eric Perez. Um, you know, the, 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 the Mexican storyline with Eric was pushed very much this week with Kane. We know about it for a while. Is that enough to, to finally make your, your debut in that region, or do you still need a little more as far as TV is concerned? Did you just get here? Because that question's already been asked. I actually did. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. Good to see you. Thanks for coming. And uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. It's, it's, you know, we've always been ready to go into Mexico, but now it definitely doesn't hurt with Kane being the, uh, the, the, the heavyweight champion and way, winning the way that he did. And this guy is actually from Mexico, has a great story, and uh, is very good. And just one more, hopefully it wasn't asked. Uh, can you just talk quickly about uh, Joe Lozon, was this asked? Um, about him getting another bonus. Uh, I believe now he passed Anderson, for the record, in UFC history. I believe it's 12, if I'm not mistaken, or it's 11. No. No? You're the, wrong, Eric. The countdown show said 11, and it said, all right, we'll talk about it. Anyways, he has a lot of them. Let's just right. put it at that. When you first saw him as a young kid who knocked out Jens Pulver, did you think that he would turn into the fighter that he is today. You never know. I mean, he's always exciting. You know, whether he's fighting world-class talent or Nick the Tooth, he always looks good. Uh, this question for Costa. Um, Costa, 
you came in replacing your teammate, and you put on a phenomenal performance against somebody who's been really moving up in the rankings. Where do you feel right now that you place yourself? I, I don't really know, but uh, I, I should be a top 10 right now, at least. Who would you like to fight here in the future? Uh, whoever they decide that uh, I have to fight, I'm more than willing to, uh, to fight. All right, good answer. <laughs> Hey, Dana, right in front of you, towards the back, towards the back in front of you. So, right, there you are. What's up, buddy? Just a real quick question about uh, Chris Lieben. What did you think about his performance and some of his post-fight statements? He said that it was kind of Brunson's style that led to a slower fight. Is that what you saw, or, or how did you assess what he did? Tonight? I love Chris Lieben personally and professionally. You know, he, he, he's a great kid. Um, you know, I, I think we, you know, tonight for the pay-per-view, I think I made a mistake putting him on the pay-per-view. I should have had him on an undercard. He's been off with personal problems for a while, has had a lot of time off, um, you know, and he looks slow tonight. Yeah, I, I wasn't crazy about that fight. That, that wasn't my favorite fight of the night, that's for damn sure. Um, you know, the other kid was looking at the clock like he was a 14-year-old waiting for school to get out the entire fight, looking at the clock. Uh, you know, you're in the UFC your first time, and, and you know, I just, it, I wasn't very impressed. Do you have a conversation with Chris and ask him if this is something that he really wants to do anymore, or do you kind of chalk it up as he had a lot of personal stuff going on, it could have been rust, things like yeah, that? Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Chris Lieben loves to fight. There's no doubt about that. Um, you know, the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest challenge in Chris Lieben's life is, is battling his demons, you know? Um, and, you know, we, we try to help him as much as we can. And, uh, you know, like I said, I love the kid. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure he'll be back, and uh, there, there's no doubt. How would the kid not be rusty? It's, it's, it's impossible. So, yeah, I kind of blew that. Believe me, Joe Silva will blame that one 100% on me. The Dana, champ is here. Dana, Any questions? Here you left. Dana? Yep. Uh, where do you see Eddie Wineland after his performance tonight? Uh, the bantamweight title, 135. It's interim right now. Yeah, you know, I always feel stupid saying stuff like this, you know, because I'm not supposed to say stuff like that. But I'm a huge Pickett fan, you know. So me and Eddie were talking. Eddie's like, I hope you're a fan of mine now. <laughs> um, and he did. He, look, he looked good tonight. Pickett's a tough guy, man. He stays in the pocket. He, he keeps throwing. He keeps moving forward no matter what you hit that kid with. And, and Eddie fought a perfect fight tonight and beat him. And for Wineland, where do you see yourself uh, with the interim belt and – in a position in the 135 division? Um, I, I see myself wherever they want to put me, you know. Uh, I, yeah, I, I would like a shot at the interim belt or the belt, whatever they, whatever they want to give me. Um, but, you know, just keep me fighting. It will keep me happy. So uh, wherever they decide to put me, that's, that's where I'm deserved, I guess. For Kane, please. Uh, Kane, obviously, congratulations on your win tonight. A lot of people saying, you know, best performance of your career. I know sometimes you're a man of few words, but, uh, you know, tell us how you feel right now after, after turning in that type of win. I feel great, you know. Um, that was a, definitely a tough fight, you know. Um, the pace that I, that I tried to put out there, um, the whole fight, I mean, it was tough, you know, and Junior stayed in the whole time. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just feel great, you know, that people out there, you know, were saying – this and that, you know, for a whole year, and the thing of me just going out there and just having, having to prove it. It looked like you might get the fight finished in the first round. Did you think that, you know, the fight was over, and, you know, what were you thinking at that time? Were you, were you thinking, hey, there may be 20 more minutes, I got to scale back a little bit, or, you know, what was going through your head? Yeah, you know, um, I know I got him with a good shot, and when we were down there, um, he was just, you know, I, I just couldn't get enough power in that position to, to really get more damage. I could see that, so there was no point for me just to keep you know, throwing hundreds and hundreds of, of shots, you know, just kind of keeping a good pace, trying to stay on top of them heavy and uh, land more effective shots. And in, in the first couple of rounds especially, it looked like maybe there were some opportunities to take his back and maybe look for a choke. Did you see those and did you, did you pass on them on purpose? Were you, you know, were you trying to send a message? Did you want this thing to go long? Because it looked like maybe no. you could finish it with a choke. You know, um, with me, my style of fighting, I mean, I love ending the fights and TKOs and everything else. And um, I... For us to to do more of a wrestling style fight, to be heavy on him the whole time, with it, to have it tired him out, you know, that's what we wanted, and uh, that's what we did. And, and final question, if I could, uh, have you had a conversation with your teammate Daniel Cormier, and, and what this means for him? Does it does this mean we can expect to see him on a diet soon, going down to 205, or, or what, what do we think? Um, you know, that's uh, one one thing. One thing we were talking about. He says that he he thinks he he might do that. You know, 
Um, but man, you know, with him, Todd Duffy that we have in the gym now, those two guys made the camp so tough because it was a thing of they knew what I wanted to do the whole time, the whole time we were sparring. You know, get a takedown, they would pop right back up because they knew what I, what I wanted to do. And it just, you know, got me ready for this fight, this type of fight. Uh, question for Dana back, back here over there. Carlos Contreras from Mexico. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, I, I heard when you were resilient with the uh, whole Gojito's mask thing. How do you think that it, that turned out? Turned out good. We had, we had this on the scrum the other day. I said I don't like goofy walk-ins. You know, I don't like guys that do goofy stuff. I like guys to be serious and come out. And uh, you know, I, I know the history of the mask and what it really means, and it's not goofy to me. They were sold out. What's that? They were sold out. What was sold out? Uh, the mask. Oh, they sold out. Uh, you know. They, oh, they I don't know. I was going to say then I like them even better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't worry about stuff like that whether we sold out or if we did any of that, but, you know, I, I, I respect what the mask means and, and what it means to him as a fighter and, 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 and uh, as a Mexican, so I'm cool with it. Fanny packs and all this other goofy stuff, yeah, I could do without it. Thanks. Kane, uh, congratulations to you. You referenced, you said people were talking for the last year. I mean, I, I've only read people saying great things about you and what a great fighter you are. Who, were you referring to things Junior said or, or other fighters or what? No, just, you know, there's always, uh, you know, fans for, for both fighters, you know, and it's good. But, uh, you know, it's a thing of me in the first fight not showing what I could really do, you know. And um, just, I, it's always been in, in the back of my mind for, since the whole year, you know what I mean, knowing what I could do. And um, I just need to go out there and prove it, you know, to think of who shows up that night and, uh, you know, impose their will on, you know, their, their opponent. You, would, you didn't want to say it before the fight, but now that the fight is over, how badly were you hurt the first time? And, and did, in fact, that make a difference in the outcome of that fight? It did, you know. Um, just mentally and physically going through a training camp and not being able to, to practice what you can do in a fight really takes its toll on you, you know. Um, just, you know, if you can't do it in the fight, then it's going to translate to, I mean, if you can't do it in the, in the gym, it's going to translate to the fight. So me being able to just kind of, stuff I can do in the gym, stuff that I wanted to do be, just because of, of the game plan, I couldn't do it, and it translated to the fight. A lot of champions say, you know, the tougher thing is to keep the belt after, after they first get it. Now you're in your second go run. How do you think it'll be different now that you know what it's like as champion, you know what your obligations are, and you know what it takes, you know, you know how hard the other guy's going to come at you now that he knows you're the champion? Just the same thing, man. We got to keep improving, you know. It's, uh, the sport's always evolving so fast. We have to go back and always get better um, in everything, you know. Just And then when it comes down to it in the fight, we need to show up that night and uh, do, do what we've been trained to do. Uh, this is uh, for Eric Perez. Uh, Mr. Perez, how does it feel to be 3-0 and uh, undefeated in the UFC with three stoppages? And did you have a hero or idol growing up that inspired you to wear the mask yourself, like a, a masked wrestler like Santo or Rey Mysterio? Yeah, the, the means for me, the, the wear the mask, uh, I'm, I'm super... Uh, ah, <laughs> my English is working out. Uh, it's like I'm like, I feel like superhero when I have when I have the mask on and and three and now right now I can believe it. I can believe it. and I've been training real real hard in and, and the gym for making the four and now four stoppers is my next step. <laughs> Question is for Joe. Joe, right here, MiddleEasy.com. Right here. Uh, obviously, you lost a lot of blood. I was curious how you were feeling at the end of the fight, and and, and how do you think that fight would have went if there was two more rounds to go? I'm glad there wasn't two more rounds. Uh, I, w I was losing a lot of blood. Uh, I, I felt okay. Uh, th honestly, the biggest thing is my legs are sore. You know, uh, when I was on my back in open guard, he was kicking in my legs. So, uh, you know, the, the blood definitely hindered me a little bit, but it was, it was really it was just Jim. You know, he was, on, he was on top of me the entire time. He, you know, kept good pressure. You know, I, uh, I'm glad there weren't two more rounds, though. This is for Kane. 
Um, were you, uh, obviously the game plan worked really well. Uh, how winded were you when it came to the third, fourth, fifth rounds? I was, uh, yeah, uh, bad, man. Um, but in training camp, I mean, I felt the same way just because it was that hard, you know. We, uh, we had a purpose in training camp to do that, and it translated into the fight. And in the fight, you know, doing that high pace of, of, uh, of fighting, I mean, especially for a big dude, I mean, that was tough. It was tough, you know, but I just knew that, that you know, if I put this kind of pace on him, I knew he would be just, just a little bit more worse than me, you know. And um, it's a thing of just being mentally strong. So that's pretty much it. You had that big right hand there in the first round. You had several more throughout the fight, a lot of combinations. Were you at one point just surprised you just, you just couldn't not knock him out? Uh, no, no, you know, he's a tough dude, man. He's uh, really good. I mean, I was, I was surprised that I was connecting so well. And, um, you know, his takedown defense was really good. And, you know, it was tough. Um, but I think it got a little easier um, as, a, as a fight went on just a little bit just because, yeah, that, the, the, the pace of the fight kind of, you know, tired him out a little bit. But um, it, was, it was a tough fight. Kane, do you think it was the pace that tired him out? It seemed like he was a little bit out of sorts after getting knocked down. Did you feel like he was never the same fighter after you did that to him? No, no I, I think it's the pace. You know, that, that wrestling pace of carrying somebody else's body around for, for that long, it's tough, man. Um, you know, I've, I've been doing it my, my whole life. And um, it's a thing that you really have to be doing it. You know, you have to do it a lot. And mentally, it just gets you so strong. And that's... That's what we, we've done in wrestling, and that's what we're doing now here, here, to, here in, uh, in the UFC. Early on in the first, it seemed like you were trying to do the wrestling moves that you had talked about. It, didn't, it wasn't going perfectly well, and mm -hmm. then you got the shot. Um, how did that, talk us through that. How, did that. how did that go down where you said, you know what, I'm just going to stand with this guy and throw for a while? That, well, it's a thing of, uh, you know, not just shooting. I mean, you can't just go in there and just expect to, to shoot and get a takedown. You guys are so good now that it's a thing of setting up your shots with with punches and kicks. You need to set them up once people, once the, your opponent starts worrying about the stuff upstairs. Then that's when you go ahead and shoot and everything else. And um, you know, just keeping them off off track of going high and low. I mean, the, you know, just work. And do you think uh, over you want Overeem as your next opponent if he wins his next fight? Whoever wins. I mean, whoever wins. Real quick, let me jump in here real quick before the next question. One thing about the Watkins, when we were talking about goofy Watkins and serious Watkins, how badass was Kane and Junior Dos Santos' walk-in tonight? That's what I'm talking about. But, but while he's here, we, we announced the bonuses earlier. Um, he won the fight tonight, and he gets a brand-new Harley-Davidson motorcycle from Harley-Davidson. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've been taking a motorcycle riding for, for about a year now, and I consider myself a biker. Right. Yeah, I, I think I, I love it. So thank you very much. Cool. Congrats, bro. Huh? Yeah, no, there will be none of that. <laughs> Sorry, whoever was asking the next question, go ahead. A few questions for uh, Eddie. You, you look kind of aggravated. What's, what's bothering you? Oh, there's nothing bothering me. Um, I don't know. Do I, do I seem aggravated? You, you just look salty for a guy who just want to fight. No, I'm happy. You know, I, 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 got, a, I got paid. I, I got to fight somebody. I got punched. I got to punch somebody back. So I'm a happy man. When, uh, when you heard it was a split decision, were, were you kind of surprised? Were you worried at all? No. Um, you, you never know what the judges are going to see. You know, I, I don't like to let it go three rounds um, just for that simple fact. I, I feel that, that it was unanimous on my side. But, uh, again, you, you don't know what they're going to see. So, uh, you know, they may see something different that you see or, or that anybody else sees, and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Speaking of opinions, the, the fans seem to kind of turn a little bit in the second and third rounds and a little, little booing going on in the second and third rounds. Do you hear that kind of thing? I know all fighters say that they don't, and they just are worried about what's going on in the cage, but did you, you hear that? Yeah, you hear it. Um, you know, you, you don't really understand why they're booing. Uh, you know, two guys slugging at each other, trying to take their heads off, and... Uh, somebody's going to boo you, but again, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. If, if they felt that they needed to boo, then, you know, good for them, I guess. Sure. Uh, a couple quick ones for Kane. Kane, how are you feeling, you know, physically after this fight? Are you, you know, pretty much, you know, beat up from being in a 25-minute fight, but, you yeah. know, mostly injury-free? Yeah, yeah. Um, I just feel a little banged up just from that, so hopefully it stays that way. And kind of what are your thoughts, you know, going forward about how quickly you'd like to get back in there? You know, in 2013, how fast you'd like to get get in there and defend? Um, you know, it's all about 
for first, man, um, I, didn't, I didn't do Christmas at home. You know, we wanted to do it afterwards. So first off is Christmas with the family. That's the most important. And then um, slowly, slowly get back in the gym. You know, I like to slowly get back in there and get back to 100% and then, you know, hit it hard. So and we'll see. And Dana, real quick, on the, on the bantamweight division, obviously you're champs out, but kind of how encouraging is it for you to have, you know, guys like Eddie and, and Eric and, you know, even Pickett kind of step up with, with the champ out at this point? It's awesome. No, it's great. And, uh, you know, nobody's had more bad luck than that kid has. And, and uh, um, you know, like I said, we, we got guys who can keep the division cracking and keep it exciting till, uh, till we can settle that. Right. Uh, and then you mentioned earlier, you know, maybe a mistake opening up with the with the leaving fight on the pay-per-view. What would you have put in there instead? It's a good question. I don't know. We, we had another fight. Wait, actually, what fight was in there? there? There was another fight that was starting to show, and I switched it with leaving. Believe me, like I told you, Joe Silva ran right over and let me know that he told me that. And he was right. Joe, you're smart. I'm dumb. I get it. Questions for Kane here to your left. Um, what was it like when you were going through the hardest rounds of the fight? Did you hear the, the fans that were pro you and chanting Cece, but did that help you get through those tough minutes? I heard both, and I heard, uh, I think they, they, with a chin for, for Junior as well. Yeah, yeah. I, heard, I heard both, you know, in there. Um, I guess a cage, but when we were actually, uh, you know, doing, you know, when the stand up or in the ground, I didn't really hear anything else, but in the cage, I could hear, you know, both sides. Before you got here, Dana alluded to Mexico being uh, something the UFC is going to do soon. What would it mean for you to go there? And also, same question for Eric. Um, you know, definitely one of my dreams to go there and fight there. Um, just having close ties with my family, being from there. For me, living, you know, close to the border where, as a family, we would go to Mexico all the time, you know, like on the weekends to, to eat, to visit family, everything else. So just uh, it's, it's very, very close to my heart. So definitely want to fight there. Cain? Cain? Uh, eh. I, you, you can do it in Spanish if he wants to. Do you speak uh, Spanish? I, yeah. I'm talking English. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll leave you alone, man. Do your thing. Uh, if you see go to Mexico, uh, also, uh, you know, I have friends. Uh, it's not, uh, friends not coming to USA, so I have a lot of, a, a lot, a lot of people who want, to want UFC in Mexico who are not have visa, not have Nothing so if it's Greg, you know, uh, fight in the the UFC and my country. Good. Dana, are we more likely to see Kane fight in San Jose or Mexico first? <laughs> I don't know. I hope Mexico. No, no knock on San Jose, but love to do it in Mexico. Right? <sighs> yeah. Not Somebody give Meltzer a microphone back there. Nos podrías decir en español, pues, qué es lo que más te gustó del de la noche de hoy, de tu victoria, y segundo, eh, si estás contento porque inclusive lograste superar a Junior Dos Santos en el boxeo. Wait, before you do, somebody, will somebody translate that for us? Uh, essentially, King, what do you think about the way that you beat Junior Dos Santos that night because you were better in the boxing even, and what do you think about the next step in your career? Pues, ahorita nomás a... A ganar, me, me gustó que, que tenía un año que estaba esperando um, esta pelea y quería ir a ganar, a, a ganar el, el título para atrás. Um, y sí, y con, como la gente es, es, están hablando que Dos Santos tiene buen boxeo y todo eso, y, pero yo ya sé que, 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 que yo puedo hacer, que yo puedo también hacer el boxeo con él, yo también puedo luchar con él y Jiu-Jitsu, pues todo. Yeah, you can do it. We're not going to make him translate himself. Come on. Yeah, actually, it was part of the plan. So I was preparing for, for a war. Actually, I knew that I was better in the boxing even. You know, I made the plan, and that's going to make it. Thank you. In, in the, uh, Kane, in the fourth and fifth round, were you, were you surprised that he was able to, uh, you know, defend, still defend your takedowns and still he still, had, he still had a lot more life in him than I would have thought after all the damage you did and the pace you kept up in the first three rounds. No, no, he's a tough dude. You know, I, I envisioned this fight going so many ways, and one of it was a hard five-round fight, and that's what it was. You know, and um, just seeing seeing him in his in his uh, in his videos, he's taking on defense. I mean, it's it's really really good. 
you know, it's not easy to get takedown on them. So it's a thing of having to keep pressuring them and, you know, you you know, you know, you get some takedowns and you don't get some other ones, you know. It's uh, part of the game, but you just keep pressuring on. And, and Dana, when you talked about, about Mexico and everything, I mean, what's the situation as far as, like, television? I mean, uh, is there any kind of, like, uh, you know, a, a network that you – feel you need to get on, or do you feel your TV situation is strong enough right now? Yeah, we, no, we've been talking about it right now, and uh, or, uh, I was talking about this the other day with everybody, and, and we're working on We've been working on Mexico hard for a long time. It's funny, because when we started this thing, I said the three no-brainers, United States, Mexico, and, and uh, the UK, the UK and Mexico have been the hardest places to get into. Um, so we're still working hard on it. We, we've got some guys going down there next week, actually scouting guys for the Ultimate Fighter, so... We're working on it. <clears throat> to the right. Kair, in Spanish, por favor. ¿Qué tan importante es para ti esta victoria en tu carrera y qué tan importante será para el desarrollo de artes marciales mixtas en México, tomando en cuenta que este precisamente no fue un buen año para para el boxeo más allá de lo que hizo eh, Juan Manuel Márquez, que tú sabes es el, es el deporte eh, favorito en cuanto a combate. How important is uh, this victory tonight for for your legacy for your career and uh, how important is for the development of the MMA in Mexico because the boxing hasn't any a good year uh, after uh, before Juan Manuel Marquez uh, three weeks ago very important you know um, it's kind of weird um, the first time I won the uh, the title um, San Francisco Giants also won the World Series, and I, you know, took account of that. I, you know, I saw that that they won, and then they won it again this year. And also, I was watching Arizona State football. They won the bowl game. <laughs> um, Marquez, you know, I just saw all the people that I was going for that I had some kind of relation with win, and I knew it was my time to win. Uh. Quick question for Dana, but before I just want to say that uh, Paula Sack spoke with the staff of Jerry Sigano in the hospital and he doesn't have a broken jar. Okay. And uh, I just want to ask you, uh, you said that probably Overeem is going to fight Sigano next. So who's going to be next for Kane? I don't know. We'll see who wins the next fight and see, you know, probably the winner of that fight will fight, will fight Kane next. <clears throat> um, and like I said, after that fight happens, Probably the fight that makes the most sense would be, uh, would be uh, you know, the rematch with Junior Dos Santos. We'll see how long it takes him to heal. And, you know, I, I think it's going to be a while before he's ready to fight again. Um, this isn't like losing a regular, regular fight. You go home and, you know, he, he was beat up pretty bad tonight. So it usually takes a little longer to recover from, from uh, what he went through tonight. And uh, about the unification of the belt from Strike Force and UFC, like what's going to happen? Do you think that uh, now that Kane has the belt and Cormier is coming to the UFC? That's what they need to figure out. The one thing that I love about these guys is, uh, like I told you guys at the press conference before, we heard from this camp that, you know, yeah, if that's the fight that has to happen, me and Cormier will fight each other, or Cormier moves to 205 pounds. I mean, whatever the deal is, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll go from there. But, uh, you know, Cormier, I, Cormier is a guy who could come in and, and do anything. I mean, he's, he, a win over Josh Barnett means something, you know? Um, so, okay, thank we'll you. see. Yeah, I'm Carlos with the Cage Mexico. Uh, three, questions, three questions for you, Dana. Uh, number one, uh, Eric Perez, three fights, three for round, first round finishes. Where does he stand in the, in the division? Yeah, he's, no, he's he's uh, he looks good. I th I think his next fight, uh, you know, his next fight will be a meaningful fight, a fight that really not not that tonight didn't, but you know what I mean, a fight that'll uh, get him closer. Right. Uh, then, any news? Who's the ultimate fighter for Mexico? Coaches will be? <clears throat> no idea. I don't know who the coaches in the United States are going to be next. <laughs> so no. Right. Um, and last question about Yushi no Um This fight, there were a lot of booing. Any, new, um, any news? How, where does he stand? Uh, did you like the fight? Any thoughts? What did I think about the booing? Yeah, on the Yushi no Kami Yeah, fight. well, l let me just put it to you this way, okay? And, I, and you know, I'm going to piss some of the guys off up here at the podium. But 
the co-main event and main event saved our ass tonight on the pay-per-view. You know, the prelims were awesome. You know, some of the earlier fights were less than awesome. Another question for Jim Miller over to your left. Uh, it looked like you and Constantino had kind of a heated exchange after the first round, and then at the end of the fight, you guys kind of hugged it out a little bit. What, what was going on there? <coughs> um, Mike uh, uh, yelled at me uh, between the second and third rounds. Um, you know, I was, I was landing good on our feet and um, wanted to take it to the, to the ground, you know. I mean, the takedown was there, so I went for it. Um, you know, I'd worked to, to mount and stuff like that, but, um, you know, he's a very talented gra grappler, and then you mix in all that blood, and it makes it really hard to hold on to somebody. So, um, you know, he was able to, you know, reverse me and, and, and win the round. So um, Mike got a little fired up and, and got in my face, you know, but sometimes that's what I need, and, you know, he's, uh, he's like my big brother. So, um, yeah, after the, after the fight, I patted him on the face and said, you know, don't yell at me anymore. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was uh, you know he's he's in there to do what he needs to do to to get me to do my job. And Gus, uh, last fight was canceled. Obviously, it's nice to end the year uh, like this. How, can you just describe just the the roller coaster the last couple months? Yeah, obviously, I was a little disappointed in November when uh, I was supposed to uh, fight Nick Ring. But uh, like I said then, everything happens for a reason, and uh, I honestly believe uh, the reason was uh, what happened tonight. Um, very excited that I'm finishing the year with a win, and especially against uh, a huge opponent like uh, Tim Boach. And uh, I'm going to enjoy my New Year's Eve. Yeah, for him, him, Boach was one of the guys that everybody was talking about possible title fights, so it was a big win for him tonight. Go ahead, Dana. sorry. Angel Cordero from the MMA Truth in Puerto Rico. Dana, a lot of people would agree that Lawson and Miller is a very good candidate for fight of the year this year. But where does this win will put uh, Jim Miller? Jim Miller's been one of the top in the division for a long time already. Uh, you know, this fight obviously, you know, gives him another bonus. Uh, and uh, and uh, he's, uh, I agree that this is definitely up for fight of the year. Um, but he's already, he's already one of the top guys in that division, has been for a long time. He's one of the best in the world and has been. Do you think that he might be fighting for number one contendership next? Yeah, I mean he, he's there. He's there now. I mean the kids. The kids one of the best in that division, and has been for a long time. I mean he's he's one of the top guys there already. You know tonight, a win over him was huge for Lozon tonight. You know if Lozon would have beat him tonight, it would have been, you know, huge for him. Okay, how about Costa and and Yushin? Do you think that it's safe to assume that that they could be facing each other next? Um, yeah, yeah anything's possible. I mean he's been one of the best guys in the world forever. And uh, he just burst onto the scene tonight. I mean, that was like I said, that was a big win over over Bosch. It was it was it was a uh, it was a, a big fight for him tonight. He feels that he should be at least uh, bumped into the top ten of that division. Do you agree with that? Oh yeah, no doubt about it. He beat Tim Bosch tonight. Yeah, he's he's one of the top ranked guys in the world. Is there a translator for Yushin? Yeah, he's yeah. right here. Okay, Go ahead. for Yushin. A lot of the fans were commenting during the fight that. Training with Chael Shannon has really paid off, especially tonight. Uh, will you continue to work with Chael? えっと、今回の試合で、え、多くのファンが、え、今回 of course, uh, but uh, not only with Chael Sonnen, but also uh, all members, including, of course, Matt Lindland and other uh, guys in Team Quest, uh, I had a very good training and uh, it uh, resulted in a good result. So uh, I'm going to train with them. Okay, and to finish, and I'm going to stand up. I'm going to say this in Spanish first. Tu Caín Velázquez y Goyito Pérez, gracias por representar a los latinos de la forma en que ustedes los hacen y gracias por abrirle tantas puertas a tantos latinos que se van a convertir en la potencia mundial del MMA a nivel mundial. Te lo agradezco de corazón. I just said that thanks to Kane and to Eric for representing Latinos all over the world. 
the way they do and for opening doors for an onslaught of Latino fighters that are going to take over the MMA. We'll take one more question. Who's got it? Uh, oh, this is for uh, Okami-san. Uh, Okami-san, Omedito. And uh, my question is, um, Chael Sonnen recently told a story how you went to his house and you had a, a run-in with uh, Mrs. Sonnen. Is that story true and uh, what happened there? え、<笑><笑> Uh, it is a very long story, and uh, uh, I was lucky enough not to get, to, uh, not, not to get uh, shot by his, his uh, mother, so uh, I'm thankful for uh, all, all Chael's family. We're happy he didn't get shot, too. Thank you guys very much, and have a great night. Happy New Year.